Henry Kissinger paid me the honor once of telling people in private that I was the most dangerous man in America and must be stopped at all costs. I was put on trial facing eventually 12 felony counts, a possible sentence of 115 years. I'm Dan Ellsberg, you may have heard my name in connection with revealing the Pentagon Papers. Most famous leak in history by the most famous whistleblower. A whistleblower is someone who exposes corruption, waste, fraud, or abuse, and has insider knowledge. But when you see something wrong, who do you tell? And if you speak up, are you a patriot or a traitor? The Pentagon Papers, a top secret study of U.S. decision making in Vietnam over two decades and four presidents. It showed that the public and Congress had been lied to. Daniel Ellsberg was the ultimate insider because he helped write the papers for the Defense Department. He couldn't believe the public didn't know what their leaders really thought. He took the papers to Congress. That did nothing. So he went to the press. Did Daniel Ellsberg change things? Daniel Ellsberg created modern whistleblowing. He pointed out that there were defects in the law that made it impossible for honest civil servants to report fraud and corruption lawfully. He changed the way we do business for the better. Being a whistleblower can come with a lot of personal risk and personal cost. The person you're blowing the whistle on or the institution won't like it and they will retaliate. Your reputation will be smeared, your career can be destroyed. And that happened to Ellsberg by no less than President Nixon and his administration. There was a death squad or, or a hit squad at least from the White House sent to incapacitate me in order to shut me up, including going into my former psychoanalyst's office to get information to blackmail me. Later, brought a dozen CIA operatives up to Washington to, quote, incapacitate me totally. I definitely regret that I did not put out this information much earlier uh, when I could have. If you ask me, do I regret that? That's a very heavy burden uh, to bear, and I've, I've felt that for a long time. Ellsberg's case may be extreme, but fear of the consequences is what stops a lot of people from coming forward against institutional corruption. How do you weigh that as you make a decision about whether to come forward? Well, now you have the Whistleblower Protection Act that sets forth a way to blow the whistle and rights against retaliation. In a direct response to the Ellsberg case, you have the Privacy Act that prevents the federal government from collecting information on your First Amendment activities and protects you, including federal employees, from the government using information to destroy you. Ellsberg exposed government secrets, but whistleblowers can reveal what's happening at banks or companies, and they can shine light not just on things that are illegal, but things they believe are immoral. It was that sense of right and wrong that led Joe Ranazizi to talk to the Washington Post. He's a retired DEA agent and the source of an explosive story about the opioid crisis one of the most important whistleblowers ever interviewed by 60 Minutes. With all these people dying, I, I, just, I just felt the story needed to be told. The DEA is the top law enforcement agency that's waging the war on drugs. And Renazizi wanted to be one of these agents fighting the drug war since he was a teenager. But when he started to make noise inside the agency about what he thought was wrong, everything changed in his career. So Renazizi retired. And when the Washington Post called, he was ready to talk. Now, if I told you that industry could manipulate agencies, Congress, because they wanted to make money and they didn't want to lose money, you would say, well, this guy's is crazy. But that's exactly what was happening. Were you afraid of getting in trouble? I wasn't afraid of getting in trouble. I was afraid of a news organization not believing me. If I was on the other end of the uh, other side of the table listening to me, I wouldn't have believed me either. The Washington Post doesn't call Renazizi a whistleblower because he had already left the DEA when he became a source. But to a lawyer like Steve Cohn, he counts because he's still an insider with something to lose and should be protected under the law. How do you think about a whistleblower if you're a journalist versus a lawyer? Well, the lawyer's job is to protect the whistleblower. The journalist's job is to get a good story. But the two meet. A journalist that protects their sources that is sensitive to the issues that a whistleblower goes through can be the whistleblower's best friend. There are steps you can take to protect yourself. Don't use government equipment, including a work-provided cell phone. And the same thing goes for your company if you're in the private sector. Use a secure computer that doesn't have enterprise software or malware that could record what you're doing. 
There are operating systems that preserve your privacy, like one called Tails. And instead of sending regular texts, use an app like Signal to communicate. It's encrypted on both ends, and it also lets you make secure phone calls. Use SecureDrop. This is a discreet way to share information with news outlets, and it's easy to use. It IDs you with a secret code name rather than your real name, so you can check back in and follow up. Steve Cohn says whistleblowing is fundamentally American. And you know where it starts? With the founding of our country. If you read the First Amendment, look what they do. The three pillars of whistleblowing are all there. Freedom of speech, that's the whistleblower. Freedom of the press, that's the way you get it to the people. And petitioning Congress, that's going to Congress, going to oversight. Exposing lies or corruption comes with personal risk, but to Dan Ellsberg, it was worth it. There's no guarantee that you're paying this cost or taking these risks will have any effect at all. There's no guarantee. It's not even likely, but there's a chance. So you have to decide whether to go along with something that you know is wrong or to pay a price on the chance that you will save a war's worth of lives.